welcome back to the Fit With Faith podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Young. If you're new here, I own Fit With Faith Coaching, and I started this podcast basically to expand my reach and really help people and, I don't know, just get more, more good stuff out there and more truths out there. So I talk a lot on TikTok. I do have an Instagram. Um, I do have a YouTube. But the reason for this podcast is to, I don't know, help you guys on a deeper level, I feel like. So from nutrition, fitness, loneliness, God, faith, the Bible, anger, the devil, all of the things are going to be talked about on this podcast. And today, I want to, I think I'm just going to end up starting a series based off of questions that I always get on relationships. Um... I always get asked about loneliness, singleness, all the things. So today in particular, we are going to talk about loneliness and dating in 2024 and how it's quite frustrating. So I hope you're ready to talk about it because I have a lot of questions that I need to answer. So strap in and let's talk about loneliness and dating. Oh boy. preface this by saying, y'all, I am going to be blunt. In the subject of loneliness and dating, I am just going to say it how I is, how, say it how it is, and really just honestly tell you what I think you need to hear. Because I've, I've been in the single season, I've been in that lonely season, I've been in that place where I wondered what's wrong with me, why is it always my fault? No one loves me that way. I'm never going to find love that way. Oh, good Lord. If I could go back and slap that Jessica in the face and be like, you need to stop it, woman. I definitely would. Because I think the devil has a really, really fun time trying to tell all of us that we're lonely, that we're unlovable, that no one's ever going to love us, so on and so forth. You know all the things you say to yourself or have said to yourself. You know. You know. And that's not from God. Point blank, God never leaves you. God never says you're alone. As a matter of fact, he says often in the Bible how he is with us and he is for us and no one can stand against us. Ha, 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 just so you know. He also says guard your heart. He also tells us how loved we are. He also says how we're his children. He also gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He also gave us Jesus. All of these things to prove that we are never alone. That he is always with us. That he is always guiding us. That he wants what's best for us. And then we get our heart broken by someone and we think that we are so unlovable and nobody cares about us. And it's the end of the world and blah, 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 All the things. So let's talk about, honestly, this kind of just hit me. So in church today, we talked about joy. And if you know anything about me, you know that I am a stickler. For joy and happiness and finding love within yourself and happiness within yourself. So let's bring that up for a second because I think that has a lot to do with the subject of loneliness and dating and relationships and marriage and all of that. First and foremost, I want you to hear me when I say your joy is your job. Your joy is your choice. Joy already lives within you. It is a state of being. To be joyful is a state of being. It is not a feeling. It does not come from another person. It comes from God. It is a gift from God. And in order for you to feel joyful, you need to choose to feel joyful. You are responsible for choosing joy, even in hard times, even when your heart gets broken, even when you're single, even when you're married and things get hard, even when you're in a relationship and things are getting tough. Your joy is your job, period, end of story, mic drop, whatever you want to say. Do not count on other people to bring you joy. Other people can bring feelings of happiness. But like I said, joy is a state of being. And something else I want to say is something I've said before, may or may not have said it on the podcast before, I'm not sure, but happiness is circumstantial. Joy is an everlasting state of being that you can choose to be in. Why do I say happiness is circumstantial? Is because, like I said, you can ha- other people can come into your life and make you happy. Good things can happen in your life to make you happy. But 
you can't if, get into a relationship and expect that relationship to bring you joy. That other person can make you feel happy, can make you feel giddy, can make you feel like a little kid, but they cannot make you joyful. You need to be joyful on your own, first and foremost, before you ever try to be in a relationship with someone else. Your relationship with God and with yourself needs to be at 100% firm foundation before you try to involve anyone else on your life, in your life. Excuse me. Because how are you supposed to expect someone else to love you if you don't know what love is? How are you supposed to find love if you don't know what love is? How is someone supposed to love you if you don't love yourself? At the end of the day, if you don't love you, how is it, how are other people supposed to love you? You're not going to find love. You're going to find a narcissist or you're going to find abuse. You're going to find a broken human. And I'm sorry, but broke people don't fix broke people. And it's not a fixed person or a healed person's job to fix you. Hurt people hurt people. So if you're still hurting, chances are you're going to hurt someone else. And one thing that... Um, Pastor Wilkerson, or Rich Wilkerson said, hold on, that sounded so weird to say Pastor Wilkerson. That sounds so weird. Rich Wilkerson said was, if you don't heal from what hurt you, you're going to end up bleeding on people that haven't even cut you. And I see that so often, hence the term narcissist. They are inherently insecure and hurtful people who end up hurting other people because they want what you have. They want that joy that you have. They want the light that you have. And I'm guaranteeing that people that are listening to you right now have dealt with a narcissist. I know I have. But how horrible would it be if you're the narcissist in someone else's story because you're not healed? Because you're still hurting, but you're counting on this other person to bring you joy, and that's not their responsibility. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, Mom, dad, brother, sister, best friend, it is not their job to make you happy. That is your job. It is your job to love yourself first before anyone else can love you. And here's another point I want to make. If you don't know how much God loves you, if you don't understand and fathom how much love God has for you, how he loves you no matter what, you're not going to be able to find the love you deserve. Because it's said in the Bible that God is love. So how are you supposed to find love? How are you supposed to have love, understand love, give love, all of these things, if you don't know the love of God? These are all things that you need to think about when you're in your single season. Maybe you're in a relationship right now and you still need to think about it because you might be in the wrong relationship. You might not be the best you in this relationship. So these are all things that you need to think about as a individual before you ever involve anybody else in on your life. I don't want a relationship from the enemy. I want a godly relationship from God. The enemy will come with a counterfeit every chance he gets to see if you're going to fall for it. And see, if you don't know the love of God, you're going to fall for the counterfeit when you're in your lonely season. Because instead of looking at it as a lonely season, you should be looking at it as a single season. As a time of prayer, as a time of worship, as a time to grow closer with God. As a time to become the man or woman that is worthy of a husband or a wife. You need to be the man or woman that is worthy of a boyfriend, of a girlfriend, of a husband, of a wife, of a family. Because we all want these things. And yet you've never done the inner work or the outer work, for example, to deserve these things. You know? Like, I'm sorry, but how... What, ladies, girls, y'all do this all the time. You want the six-foot guy with the good-paying job and the, the sustainable income and the house and the nice car and all these things and you look so much on the outward appearance and what these people have, not who they are. Meanwhile, you're barely making ends meet, you don't have a good car, you don't even work out, you don't take care of yourself and you, you're you wanting the polar opposite of you and no, no, because you attract what you are. So if you want these things, 
make yourself these things. You want the guy who works out? Guys, you want the girl who works out, who's in shape? You want the one who takes care of herself, the one that can cook, the one that can do all these things? Do it. Do it yourself. Because like I said, no one can come in to make you happy. You're not going to be a fit for your polar opposite. Sorry, they're not looking for you. Women, ladies, girls, listen to me when I tell you. If you want the guy who works out five, six days a week, has abs, has all the nice muscles, all the things, start going to the gym and, you know, building muscle and, you know, like taking care of yourself and not eating crackers at midday for lunch or Starbucks for breakfast. I'm sorry, but you need to stop that because the guy that you're looking for ain't looking for you. He ain't looking for that kind of girl. And gentlemen, you want the girl who's super pretty, has her life together, has a good job, has a career, has all these things in order, and is ready to be a wife, honestly? Um, you better be prepared to be a husband. You better be taking care of yourself. You better know how to lead her closer to God. You better be going to church every Sunday. You better have your mind in the Word. You better be talking to God and praying and bettering yourself. I don't understand how men and women have these aspirations for things that aren't anywhere in their own life. It makes no sense to me. So when you talk about being lonely, um, yeah, no doubt you're lonely because you want someone who's literally your opposite. Marriage, relationship, all of these things are gifts from God. They're not birthrights. Like, they're gifts. You don't just get be born like, yep, one day you're going to have a husband or a wife. Yep, one day you're going to have a family. You have to make yourself worthy of those things. Because like I said, they're gifts. And how is God supposed to give you a gift? You ain't ready for it. You're not doing your own homework. How are you supposed to pass the test? Yeah, and <laughs> this was funny. I heard um, I was, Rich Wilkerson preached on this, and I love the way he said it. He said, you want to find, like, <laughs> ladies, you want to find a husband? Get out of the house! <laughs> and it's true. We, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, but also I, I'm in my single season, and I'm fine, and I'm not really in a place where I'm, like, ask, aspiring to date or anything like that. Like, we'll get into that in a second, so let me not digress real quick, but... He said that, and it's like, it's true. Like, how are you supposed to find the person that you want if you're not putting yourself in a position to A, meet this person, or B, be seen by this person? Because I, I don't know about y'all, but I really don't like dating apps, don't want to use them, don't have them. I actually went as far as to deactivate the accounts I had. Because I was like, no, like I'm done with this. This is not how God wants me to meet someone. And I prayed and prayed about it. And I literally was like, God, if you don't want me to meet someone this way, I want these apps to disgust me. I want to feel so disgusted and annoyed by these apps that I don't even want to be on them ever again. And... Uh, they already did make me cringe, but now I have such an indif indifference. Because I'm sorry, I'm not a car salesman. I'm also not a shopper. So window shopping, looking for what's best on the outside, who has the best picture, all that kind of stuff. It's just, no, 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 no. That's not who a person is. That's just what they look like. And I just, I, I was like, God, make it disgust me. Because... Take the desire off my heart. Take the need off my heart. Take away the distraction. Like if, if I'm not going to meet someone on an app, take it away. Because I get it. That's what society does. But it's not what I want to do. And I asked for it. And I have quite literally zero desire to date, to be on the app, to do all those things. Because A, I'm not bored. I got a lot of things I got to do. And two, it's just, it was a distraction. And I was like, God, remove the distractions. I know that there's something you want me to do. I know you have a plan for my life. And if these things are distracting me and pulling me away from that, make them disgust me. And it worked. And he did. And I'm happy. And I'm not distracted anymore. And you know what? Whenever he decides that he 
I that no. Whenever he decides that I'm ready for a husband, he will bring me my husband. And whenever my husband, my future husband, is ready for me, we will know. God, God will know, and one day, sometime, someplace, we will meet each other, and that's that. And I am okay with that. I am very content with giving God control of that aspect because. I don't know about y'all, but one, I'm tired of being hurt. Two, I'm tired of the, what's the word? The whole facade of dating, the pressure of dating. I'm just tired of it. So, not to digress even farther, but you get my point. So, when you're in this single season, I want you to start being single intentionally. Do the things you want to do. Do the things you've always thought about doing. Find hobbies. Make yourself better. Start something new. Build something. Become someone different. You have the ability right now of time to prepare yourself for your future. And like I said, when God believes that you are ready and your significant other is ready for you, I promise you, you will meet each other. But if you don't have that belief within you, if you don't have that heart posture of I'm ready when God believes I'm ready, then chances are there's a few things that could happen. You're going to meet this person and blow it. Um, you're never going to be able to meet this person because you won't get out of your house and you, you're not putting yourself in a position to be seen by the, the person who God has for you. Or, I mean, you're just going to be that pessimistic friend who's like, I'm going to be alone forever, <laughs> single. No. You can go put on that facade on social media all you want, but we all know the desire of your heart is that you want a relationship and you're just bitter because it's not happening the way you want it to happen. Facts. So, I want to read some Bible verses that really kind of bring that concept a little further in. So, John 14, 1 says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in the Lord and trust also in me. Because loneliness can cause us to be afraid, but, I mean, it can cause you to be afraid and also cause you to have a ton of anxiety, which God says, cast your anxieties out on the Lord. Like, don't let your hearts be troubled. Let God be the ruler of your heart. Let God be the director of your heart. Let God be your compass. Let God be the driver. Because nothing good comes from anxiety. And oh my God, I just saw Inside Out too, And that just brought me back to it. And that's wholeheartedly my favorite movie subtle plug go see inside out too all right <laughs> and then in first peter chapter 4 verse 19 it says so if you are suffering in a manner that pleases god keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the god who created you for he will never fail you so why i want to read that one and say that one because if you are suffering in a manner that pleases god that we're going to unpack that a little bit because you're suffering because you feel like you're suffering. Whereas God says, no, I need you single right now because your heart isn't set on me and your heart needs to be set on me before I can bring you your person. So it also says that sometimes we feel alone in our stand for Christ and we can take comfort in knowing that there are others who are equally committed and that God rewards our bold commitment, which is true. When you embrace your single season as a time of growth, as a time of setting, getting closer to God, building your foundation with God, instead of, oh my God, nobody loves me, then, I mean, there is billions of people in the world, and you seriously think, like, oh, I'm forever alone. No. Nice try. Don't be a pessimist. So, understand that, like, yeah, you're lonely right now, but you're not alone, don't let yourself be desperate. Don't fall for the counterfeit. Don't settle for less than what you want. And one thing I want to say right now too as we're in this area of the conversation is I want you to literally make a list of all the things you want in a partner. How they want how you want them to act. How you want them to look. What jobs you kind of want them to have. Um What's the other thing I was going to say? How you want your relationship to be. Ma literally make a list. And hold tight to that list. And then another thing I've told clients of mine is make a list of non-negotiables. Because there's no one's perfect. You're not perfect. Your significant other is not going to be perfect. Are they going to be perfect for you, quote unquote? 
yes, that's the godly design of marriage. But there's going to be things that bother you. There's going to be things that you don't agree with. And that's okay. So make that list of non-negotiables as like, let's say your top five things that you will not put up with. Top five things you do not want in a relationship. And man, the moment that you find one of those, like you're dating someone, you see one of them pop up, freaking back off. That is a non-negotiable. That crosses a boundary that I've set for myself. Don't just, oh, it's fine. It's not that big a deal. Just because they're attractive. No, sorry, don't do that. That's just going to wind you up in a whole lot of hurt. And then another verse I want to read is something that gives you a little bit of more encouragement. So it says, how can I help those who are lonely? These are my notes in my Bible, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to say that. In chapter 3, in in John 3, verses, I mean, words are hard. In John 3, chapter 1, verse 5. Says you are being faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through. What does that mean? You okay? I'm gonna switch my, what I was gonna say. So what does that mean in this context? When you are faithful to God, when you are caring for the traveler traveling teachers who pass through, it means that people are gonna come and go. I'm relating it to this context again. People are gonna come and go. You're going to meet all kinds of people. You're going to date all kinds of people. But when you care for them, when you show your heart of God for these people, when you are kind, when you're nice, when you're considerate, when you're upfront, you're pleasing God. Because like I said, you're going to meet all kinds of people. So one thing that I'm going to kind of like give as an example is like ghosting someone. You go on a date with someone, you don't like them that much, you don't see that it's like going to go anywhere, tell the person. Be kind. That means you are caring for that person's heart. You are treating them the way God would treat them. And like, you, there doesn't have to be hard feelings. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you don't click with someone or you don't feel it with someone, then just tell them. But in your lonely season, in your single season, also just be honest with yourself. That was something I had to do recently where I, I truly don't feel like God has me in a season of dating. So I've told a couple people like, hey, I, I'm really sorry. I just, I don't think I'm in a dating season right now. Like you're nice, awesome, cool person. I am not in a season of dating and I need you to know that and I need to be honest with you so that we're on the same page. Because leading people on ghosting people, playing games, all of that stuff goes against what uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 5 says. Is you're being faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through. If you're not being honest with people and you're ghosting, you're leading people on, you're playing games, all of that stuff, you're not being nice. You're not caring for other people's hearts. You're not caring for their feelings. So... When God says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. And then in Psalms 23, 4, he says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, you are close beside me. That is your comfort in your lonely season because as you're single and you're not dating and you're wondering when it's going to happen, you need to understand that God does not leave you. God is with you while you're battling this season. And it's not always going to be easy. You are going to feel hurt. You are going to get lonely when you're single. And that's just part of it. But you can choose to let your loneliness steer you away from God. Or you can choose to understand that, yes, I'm technically lonely right now. I don't have a significant other. I don't have a family. I don't have all the things that my friends have or Joe Schmo has on Instagram and all these people are posting pictures with their boyfriend and their girlfriend and I don't have that. No, you don't have it because you're not ready for it. Do the work with God. Maybe your person isn't ready for you. And I'm sorry, but I don't want to date another unhealed individual. It is not my job and it is not your job to heal people. It is their job to heal themselves with God. Dude, and then what, oh, what did that video say? It was like, uh, th this guy's very obnoxious on TikTok. And he was like, ladies, stop being the Red Cross of dating. 
It is not your job to heal people. It's not. Like I said, hurt people hurt people. God provides healing. And that is not your job to do it. Because you are not God. You cannot heal this person. And if they don't want to heal themselves with God, ladies and gentlemen, bye. Bye. Goodbye. I do not want to be, I am not responsible for your feelings. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be rude and mean and disrespectful and all those kind of things. But like, I am not responsible for your healing. You're responsible for your healing. Now, when it's at your significant other and they're hurting and they're going through things, then yes, 100%, you are not responsible. You are to help them going through these hard times because that's what you're there for, is to help this person. Women are supposed to surrender to their husbands and men are supposed to guide their wives and be a safe haven for their wives. A relationship, a marriage is supposed to be a safe place. Each person, person, should feel safe to be themselves, safe to come with you with their problems, safe to talk to you. They should feel trust. They should feel love. They should feel comfort. If you are not in a position to provide those things for another person, let alone yourself, you're not ready for it. So stop idolizing a relationship. Stop begging God for a relationship when you are not ready for it. Because we all know, and if you don't know, the verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, of the love is patient, love is kind. If you cannot take out the word, word love and put your name in place of love, you are not ready to be loved nor to give love. Because, like something that my Bible says, it says, This famous chapter about love gives us one of the most eloquent descriptions of love ever written. Love is a commitment and a choice of conduct that produces powerful feelings. If you practice the qualities and behaviors described in these verses, you will experience satisfaction and fulfillment beyond imagination. Because in those verses, it tells us exactly the way God treats us, exactly the way God is and who God is. And if you want to understand love as a whole, you need to embody those verses. You need to realize that, okay, God loves me this much, and this is how God loves me. And I'm supposed to be a disciple of Christ. I'm supposed to be an example of God. I'm supposed to love other people. So I need to love other people this way. And like I said, if you can't replace your name with love, or vice versa, then you are not ready. And you have some things you need to work on. And that's okay. We all have things to work on. Like I said before, we're not perfect. And we're not meant to be perfect. That was Jesus' job. And he came and he was our perfect lamb. And he did sacrifice himself for us so that we may have a relationship with God. And it is our job to seek to be like Jesus. And Jesus loved everybody, no matter when they hurt him, no matter when they stoned him, no matter when they put him on a cross. He loved everybody. Because he knew the love of God. And he believed in the love of God. And that is what we have to do as well. So... What I also want you to realize is that you have to be ready to receive love. And that has to do with those verses as well. If you're this person who's like, ah, nobody loves me. Or like you're super standoffish, you're narcissistic, you are pessimistic, and you're just kind of like, I'm forever alone, it's fine. No one loves me. And you keep saying that to yourself, you're not even ready for love. If you have that, if oh my gosh, if you say this, nobody loves me, crap. You're not ready for love. And love will never be ready for you. Because love needs space to grow. Love needs space to be planted. And if you have this inherent belief system of nobody loves me, I'm forever alone, I'm not good enough, I'm too much, I'm this, I'm that, and the other, and you're letting the enemy control your thoughts, uh, yeah, have fun. Um, meeting other narcissists and unhealed individuals who are just going to probably make your problems worse. So, I need to drink some coffee. Hold on. I need a, a real time. I need a drink. And I hope you guys aren't going to hear me swallow. If you do, I'm very sorry. I hate when other people swallow, so I'm sorry. But the point that I want to hone in on, too, as far as love and relationships and loneliness is that 
In 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it says, We love each other because he loved us first. Love is hard. While it's easy, it's also hard, but it's also a choice. Because, same thing with joy. You have to choose love. Because people are going to make you mad. People are going to mess up. But if you choose love over hate, if you choose love over anger, if you choose joy over sadness, if you choose joy over anxiety, if you choose joy over pain, and you choose to love people through the pain, and you choose joy through the pain, because there's always joy to be found. But if you don't believe that, you're never going to find it. Just like love. There's always love to be found. But if you don't believe that, if you don't understand how much God loves you, you're never going to find love in someone else. I mean, not everyone has a great parental uh, example of love. Earthly love, I guess, for that matter. Like some people I know, like, Maybe your mom didn't love you a lot. Maybe your dad didn't love you a lot. Maybe you didn't have a dad. Maybe you didn't have a mom. Maybe you were in foster care. Maybe you got your heart broken. Maybe you're divorced. I get it. There's bad examples of love. I understand. But here's the thing. While I also say it's a bad example of love, is it actually love? No. Because God is love. So if someone isn't treating you the way God treats you, they don't love you. And that's the key component in finding a spouse and finding a significant other is, are they loving you the way God intended love to be? Are they showing up for you the same way God shows up for you? And granted, as I say this, again, no one is perfect and no one can be Jesus. No one can love exactly the way God can or Jesus can, but you can try to. You can pray over it. You can help people. You can be a good human. You can take care of people. You can be someone's safety net. There's ways to be and embody Jesus' love. And there's ways to embody God's love. And to seek to love others the way God loved us. And seek to love others the way Jesus loved us. Because... I mean, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Most important of all... Continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. So what my Bible says is that love is an act of spiritual maturity based on the eternal significance of each person and on what God is doing in your life. When you learn to love the unlovable, you have developed the ability to see others as Jesus does. Mm-hmm. And we all know that to be true because even as Jesus died on the cross... He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's love. That's a love that we possibly I could never emulate because we're not Jesus. But to have that as an example of that's how much Jesus loved us is that even though they rejected him, they cast him out, they threw things at him, they never even cared about him, he still loved them. Because it was the right thing. Because it was the God thing. And that's what you have to seek to be like. And one thing that I've said a lot on my TikTok, I uh, don't know if I've said it on the podcast before, possibly have, is that love is unconditional, but access is not. What do I mean by that? Love is infinite. Love never expires. Love never burns out. Because that's God. Like I said, God is love. So you can't put a limit on love. But you can put a limit on access. Just because you love someone doesn't mean they deserve full access to you. And the example that I want to tell you about is Adam and Eve. God loved Adam and Eve. But once they did what he told them not to do, he limited their access to the Garden of Eden. You don't have to give everybody full access to you. If you're in a relationship, if you're a marriage, I should say, if you're in a marriage, you're in a covenant, and that person deserves access to you. And if you can't give that person full access to you, you need to do some work. 
but you don't have to forgive people and give them full access. If someone crosses your boundary, if someone hurts you, if someone disrespects you, if they don't treat you the way God would want you to be treated, limit their access to you. Don't let them walk all over you. Don't let them do it to you again. None of that is godly. None of that is like, okay, here's another, here's how I'm going to word this. Jesus sacrificed himself. We're not called to sacrifice ourselves the same way. We are called to sacrifice ourselves for God, to be God's followers, to be God's children. But Jesus came as the perfect lamb to be our sacrifice. We are not called to be and do what Jesus did in that sense. So you can love people without giving them access to you. You can love people without giving them everything. You should love because, like it says, God first loved us. But access is a totally different topic, which we'll get into. But just remember that. Like, love is unconditional, but access is not. Not everyone deserves full access to you. Not everyone deserves to know your story or needs to know your story. Not everyone needs to know where you live. Not everyone needs your phone number. Access is limited based off of how this, who this person is, how well you know them. Do they treat you right? Are they godly? Do they know God? What is their heart posture? What is their faith level? All of that has to play into the amount of access that you give someone. So maybe that's something you need to figure out in your single season. What access do, I, do people have for me? Or how do I word that better? You have to figure out the level of access you're going to give people. And here's a tip. If you don't want anyone to have access to you, you're still hurting from something and you need to start healing. So embrace your single season as a time of growth. Maybe start calling it that. Call it your growing season instead of your single season. Because this needs to be the key takeaway from this whole podcast right now. You need to be ready to be the person worthy of your significant other that God has for you. And if you're not, start praying to be made ready for the relationship that you want. Because God made Eve for Adam because he didn't want Adam to be alone. Because he saw the need for companionship. God created marriage as a covenant between a man and a woman. A covenant. Not a, oh yeah, he's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. Oh, she's pretty He's cute. He's got abs. He's six foot tall. And she works out. She's got a nice butt. She's got pretty hair. She takes care of herself a little bit. No. A covenant is so much more than that. And I really want to get into that on one of the episodes of this series of what a covenant is and how we have to honor the covenant of marriage. But the key takeaway from this podcast, start preparing yourself are making yourself worthy to be the man or woman worthy of the relationship that you desire. Because that's the only way that God can give it to you is if you're ready for it. And with that, I hope, I hope this podcast taught you something. I hope you learned something. I hope something kind of struck a chord with you. And if it did, please share it with a friend. Um, please rate my podcast. Give it a Give it a thumbs up. Please like it. Subscribe to it. All the things. I truly love podcasting. I think it's a lot of fun. And I hope to have guests on here soon. So one thing that I want to say to you before I close out is, you need to pay attention. Ready? Sorry, that was super loud. But y'all, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are made in the image and likeness of God. Do not settle for less than you deserve. Do not settle for less than what God has for you. Embrace your single season and make it the best season yet. And I hope you're ready for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I hope to see you again soon.